the 911 police dispatcher receives calls for emergency assistance and dispatches the necessary units. They maintain effective and efficient communication with agencies such as law enforcement, emergency medical services, fire department, and the public. I'm Annie Studebaker and I bring to you an abundance of knowledge from our South Texas rural communities. Follow me as I take you on a journey of inspiration and insight that will offer a deeper connection with people and businesses. You're watching BTX TV. Once the police dispatcher has routed the 911 emergency calls to the proper agency, it becomes, without a doubt, a quick pursuit of public safety. Today, we take a tour to three of the 911 emergency response facilities, Willacy County Emergency Medical Service, Raymondville Police Department, and Raymondville Fire Department, located in Raymondville, Texas. As I walked toward the Willacy County Emergency Medical Service Facility, I was struck by the thought that all these medics are faced with the hardest challenge of all time, making life-threatening decisions. They are well-trained and equipped to facilitate a wide range of medical emergencies. Gilbert, tell me a little bit about this class and how it works. All right, so we have two different classes going on right now. We have a EMT basic class, which is like our introduction to EMS, and then we also have our paramedic course going on. Both of them we offer at the beginning of the spring of every year, and the basic course is something that's needed for the general public before they can start into EMS, and that EMT basic is that first certification that somebody would get. Once they have experience and have gotten certified as a basic, then in, in following years they can get certified or come take the class as an EMT paramedic. Who could be participants for this program? We have it open to anybody that's in the community from the Rio Grande Valley, specifically Willacy County, that's interested in the EMS career or helping out uh, their community. How long is the course and what days do you offer it? The EMT basic is generally about four to five months and we offer it at nights for those people that are working somewhere else and it's two nights a week depending on when we set the schedule. The paramedic course itself is between six and eight months and that is three nights a week. Rural grant funding for education has been a great incentive for interested future medics. Definitely a plus since there's a shortage of paramedics. And by doing these courses and having the opportunity to apply for these grants, we can bring in so many more people that would otherwise not take it because of the cost of the courses. The cost per student basically drops three quarters of the uh, cost is covered by the grant, so that only leaves one quarter of the cost for the student. After the participants complete this course, what, where do they go from there? Once they complete the course, they actually have to take a final exam with us, but then after they've done that and passed the course, they'll take a national certification exam. Once they've taken that, then that, that makes them eligible to get certified in, in the state of Texas to work in EMS. The EMS facility is built to comfortably accommodate medics. So this is their home away from home, right? This basically becomes their home away from home. Yeah, I have Saturday and Sunday. Those are two of our medics right now that are working. They're on duty at this time. Okay. This fellow right here right. is going to start the EMT program yeah. soon, and he's out here trying to make sure this is really what he wants to do, so he's up here observing. This is great. Johnny yeah. over there is uh, happens to be the, are you still the uh, fire fireman's uh, mascot? Mm -hmm. He's the local fire department mascot. And he also comes out here and hangs out at the EMS as well. So this is their living room. This is all for the medics. For them to be comfortable here. And if they're not on call, they have every right to be there. Mm -hmm. And this is their uh, utility room right here. Followed by, oops, followed by their kitchen area. They have a full kitchen in here. This area of the uh, building is nothing but dorms. In here, in this room, is our uh, supply room. Our supply room being all the supplies that are used for our ambulances that are used out in the field. Anything that goes in an ambulance is documented on which ambulance it went and how many were put on that ambulance. So also, that's why daily you do an inspection of yes. the ambulance and they on have to On a daily basis, it. when the medics show up here in the morning at 8 a.m., their first uh, duty is to get on their ambulances that they're going to be using and make sure that it is properly stocked. 
So we have five ambulances that we uh, have access to here at uh, Willis County EMS. We operate three of them per day and leave two as backups in case one of them breaks down. There's always a backup that we can get up on. And you see it's got the air ride system. What that does, it lowers the whole bed down so that when we lift the patient on the bed, it's not so high to lift. Once inside the ambulance, I was able to see the amount of medical aids and medicines that these units hold, definitely bigger than I expected. When they go out to the scene and pick up a patient, first thing they're gonna do is get this uh, stretcher down, they're gonna load the patient up, strap him in, bring him in here, and they're gonna do all their treatment here. Now, we don't waste a lot of time treating people on scene. And the reason being is because the hospital has way more equipment than we do. All we try to do is stabilize the patient and then get in route to the hospital as quick as possible so we can get into a doctor. How many people are allowed in an ambulance? In an ambulance, you must have a minimum of two medics on board, being that it's two basics, a basic and intermediate, or a paramedic, a basic. There has to be a minimum of two medics on board. Raymondville is a small town and yet holds an abundance of high-tech medical equipment, such as this 18-room inflatable hospital called the Regional Response Unit, fully equipped and ready to accommodate patients during a crisis. This is the Regional Response Unit, and uh, what we have here is a unit that, hold, that holds 18 patients. It is it's a tent is what it is and it has 18 sections with curtains it also has an air conditioner or a heater if necessary and we'll get Raul to show us more in a minute believe it or not the hospital is inside that duffel bag right there Wow. That big old tent that you saw blowing up in that picture? Yes. That's where it's at. This is the generator that operates it. These right here are prism inflatable lights. We have three of those. It's enough to light up a whole football field. And all it is is a blow up lamp. It blows up about 30 feet up in the air. And it will eliminate a lot of energy out there. And when is the last time you used this unit? The last time we used this unit was uh, we had it deployed for spring break, so we had it out at South Padre Island for two weeks out there for the spring breakers. And it came in very, very handy for them out there. You actually had patients in We it. actually had patients out there. It wasn't a drill or anything. It was a true event going on. And we probably cycled about anywhere from 80 to 100 patients per day out there. I've actually been in EMS now going on 16 years. When I first started, I started as a volunteer, wanting to give something back to the community and getting involved. I think the biggest part is actually seeing uh, when you actually have helped somebody, and, and, and I'm not talking just about the patient, where you help the family members, and the family members actually come, come and congratulate you or thank you for helping them. Even if it's a minor emergency to them, it's a major emergency, so that's really important to me. If somebody wanted to enroll in our class, we normally would advertise it on the local paper, but they would contact our office here at Wilson County EMS at 956-689-5456 and ask for myself, Raul Torres, which I handle all the paperwork for the course. Uh, I was in a health career before I started here and I just thought it was a way to continue to give back to the community. And 16 years later, I'm still here now, I'm teaching, and I've been teaching, going on 10 years, teaching the EMS-related uh, careers. It's very interesting and it's very exciting once you get out there. <laughs> the Raymondville Police Department is comprised of dedicated professional officers that are committed to provide an enhanced level of community safety, protect the constitutional right guaranteed to all people, and improve the quality of life of each citizen. We're here at the Raymondville Police Department. We're very excited to tell you that we're going to be talking to the SWAT team, the K-9 unit, and Crime Stoppers. Here at my right, we have two gentlemen. They're going to introduce themselves. Yes, good afternoon. My name is David Robles. I'm a detective with the Raymond Police Department. I'm also the Willis County Crime Stoppers Coordinator. Oh, great. I'm uh, Andres Maldonado. I'm also a detective with the Rainbow Police Department, and I'm also a member of the special response team for the Rainbow Police Department. The department has five divisions. 
that work cohesively with one another for the pursuit of public safety. In doing so, several programs have been established. Today, we will be interviewing members of the Specialized Response Team whose extensive SWAT training make them an asset to this community. Let me ask you a little bit about the SWAT team. What does that acronym stand for? Well, SWAT uh, actually stands for Special Weapons and Tactics. Our uh, team is called the SRT team, which is a special response team. Um, our job it just pretty much stands that we respond to uh, specialized situations such as narcotic search warrants, barricaded subjects, um, any type of you know shootings or anything that may occur that would need our assistance as well. And um, any type of dangerous situation where our patrol officers uh, would need extra help going into to assist them or any other agency, any surrounding agency or within our jurisdiction. How many members of the SWAT team do you have now? Currently we have six members on our team. Um, we also have one assisting member from the Willis County District Attorney's Office. We, uh, <clears throat> we've all come together. We all have our own jobs here at the Rainbow Police Department as well. Like I said, I'm a detective and the other guys are patrol supervisors and patrolmen who uh, also have to do their job as a patrol officer answering calls for service and then this is their kind of extra duty that they take upon to to do themselves. And this specialized training that you have to go through, how long is the course and what are the requirements? The the requirements um, for us is uh, two years experience uh, based uh, if you if the person we hire has military experience or prior we will waive the two-year experience as well but um, the specialized training is a 40-hour course uh, which the last time we held it was here or it just consists of different things, a lot of physical, uh, you know, running, running through stuff, jumping over tables, a lot of shooting, and um, just a lot of practicing on in entering a building and entering a room and also approaching, uh, a attacking a vehicle. That's just different scenarios and situations that you might run into uh, while on this team and uh, a specialized training that will Kind of just a, a situation where as, if a subject is barricaded inside a car and doesn't want to get out, is threatening to hurt himself or others. It, uh, once all negotiations have come to a stop where we know that person's not coming out, that's when we would have to come in, you know, set up a command post and set up a strategy on how we're going to attack that vehicle and get that person out safely. And tell me, sir, a little bit about Crime Stoppers and how it works. <clears throat> Crime Stoppers was started here in Raymondville back in 1995, September 1995 as a result of a, of a murder that occurred. Family and friends of the deceased um, got together and set up an account at the local bank uh, to assist law enforcement by providing a reward to anyone with any information regarding the murder. Um, they then found out about Crime Stoppers' existence and found that it, some, it played the same role as what they were trying to accomplish as far as being a means of uh, communication for anyone to call and provide any information regarding the, the case. Crime Stoppers works hand in hand with the Raymondville Police Department. 911 state to emergency. The informant's information is very valuable and will remain anonymous throughout the entire investigation. Keep in mind that stopping crime is the responsibility of every citizen. And it's a, a useful tool that Raymond Police as well as other agencies can benefit from. From any information that anyone calls and, and provides. The caller is eligible to receive a reward of up to $1,000. Their information leads to the arrest and or indictment of the person. It's been very, very, uh, very beneficial. We've, we've benefited from a lot. It's, it's a great tool that we have, a great means of information. Definitely. Being a past educator, I've always seen Crime Stoppers advertised, and, and we, we have definitely worked with you, and it's, it's great. It's great to know that we have somebody there that uh, can definitely keep stuff um, without getting the person in trouble and yet we can always find the culprit. Exactly and that's one of the one of the one of the things about Crime Stoppers that they're aware that the public knows the public is aware of what occurred and who's responsible but the main thing that always stood in the way of re re relaying that information was the fear of being identified, the fear of retaliation. Exactly. And with Crime Stoppers they can call give the information and not have that that fear that they'll be made out and also receive money in the process. That's so. great. Well, thank you very much for sharing, and then we'll look a little bit more in depth about the SWAT and the Crime Stoppers and how it works. The K-9 unit has two narcotics detector dogs that have been skillfully trained. 
These precious dogs, who truly are man's best friend, work hand in hand with officers in much needed situations for scouting out drugs. We're back here at the Raymondville Police Department. We're going to be talking to two officers that belong to the K 9 unit. Would you please introduce yourselves, starting with you? My name is Officer Sergio Rodolfo. My name is Elmer Garcia. Welcome. I would like for you to tell me a little bit about the K 9 unit and what it serves. Find drugs, keep it out of the kids' hands, and try to keep money from going to the drug dealers. Um, we work with uh, all the other agencies here in Willis County, uh, the state troopers, the sheriff's department, the constable's offices, and us, and with our, the SRT team we have here. So whenever they do raids, we actually take the dogs in there with them and find the drugs whenever they need our assistance. Let me ask you, sir, how, uh, how do you train these dogs? I try to train the dogs twice a week. We use different types of uh, drugs, uh, real drugs. For example, right now here I'm showing you, we have cocaine. We have different uh, containers. We were just outside ones. and uh, I saw you take that box out and what that is is real drugs. So you, drugs. we did a little, uh, a little run watching the dog search in a car, in a vehicle, and it was amazing to see how the dog went over there and found the stuff that was placed in this vehicle. And tell me about the process of um, these dogs are, what kind of, are they a specific breed? The main dogs that most of the police department use are shepherds, Malinois, and Labradors. The reason why is they're, they have better smell than any other dog. Uh, they're very smart, they're very obedient. We have to wisely choose what animals that we pick in order to get the best results. And how long has Raymondville had a canine unit? Since 1992. 92. How long have you been serving, sir? About a year and a half. A we year? both started at the same both time. Both started the Oh, well, this program. is great. Right now, also to the, the canine, I mean, uh, the Raymondville Department uh, is participating in uh, two federal uh, programs named Stone Garden and Border Star, basically uh, targeting the, uh, the expressway 77 as well as uh, the highway 186. Um, like a previous uh, officer from the SRT team mentioned, you know, Raymond is the gateway to the valley. So uh, a high uh, traffic in drugs and money comes through or passes through Raymondville. Um, we do, like uh, Officer Rulfo mentioned, um, assist other agencies such as the Willis County Sheriff's Department, DPS, and also the SRT team. Well, that's great. Have you ever had calls where you had to go to another city and, and your dogs help out over there? Yes, through the uh, Sheriff's Department. Uh, when the Sheriff's Department needs uh, a canine, uh, we're on call 24-7, uh, both Officer uh, Rodolfo and myself. And when we get a call, obviously they'll do it through the department. And once we get the clearance, we pretty much set to go. Pick up the canine unit, pick up our dogs, and, and just head over there. Um, yeah, participate also. We do a lot of PR with the dogs, uh, activities at the schools, um, daycares, and also at the different uh, local churches. You know, so basically teaching the kids to stay away from from the drug from the drugs. And they cut uh, the attention because of the dogs. You know, they all like to, to see yes. the dogs work and, and, and pet. And, you know. and have you ever had to go take your dogs to search lockers? Yes. Uh, basically, part of the training, our training, was uh, through some uh, school properties and school case scenarios. And um, uh, last summer, we did one in uh, La Sada, which is a, a city, a neighbor city. Um, they were going to a summer, summer uh, trip. So obviously uh, they call us and we did a search on the, uh, on the bus as well as the uh, luggage that the students were carrying. So yeah, we do you know, assist other agencies, other school, I mean schools or anybody that asked for help. Uh, a few days ago too, uh, there was a concerned mom that uh, just wanted us to check the vehicle because she, she was uh, scared that uh, her daughter had a Place some drugs inside of the car, and just with her consent, we just run the dog here at the parking lot, and you know, it was a good result. No drugs were found, but you know, I mean, you know, if the the community needs the dogs, we'll we'll be there. Definitely. 
Well, that's great. And when you say the unit, do you have a separate vehicle where you transport the dogs? We do have a separate vehicle. Um, basically, the difference between our vehicle and, and the other units is the back seat. The back seat has to be flat, in that way it doesn't damage the, the dog's uh, legs, you know, and um, it has a, a, a proper, a proper uh, cage, I say that. Oh, okay. Do these dogs, do you, do they, are they in a special diet of some sort? We, we do try to keep them in shape. I mean, uh, part of being canine, and that's something that the chief uh, always strives, is to, to check on the weight of the dogs. Obviously, oh. the weight is very important in the dog because the weight uh, is going to keep that drive. We don't want to have it too heavy because <coughs> obviously the drive is going to be less. And we don't want them uh, too skinny either <laughs> because obviously uh, they're going to be too, uh, too weak to perform. So yes, I mean, we do check. The, our dogs are properly in their weight. Uh, we take them to the uh, local vet and they do uh, well, you know, a check out on, on them. So yes, the weight is important on the dogs. Diet, obviously, we try to buy you know, the dog food, but obviously a, a good brand that has the, the special nutrients for I think these dogs deserve a big treat. We have just spoken with the canine department here at the um, Raymondville Police Department. We're very proud to say that we have a great agencies that work together for law enforcement purposes. Thank you and we're really glad to have you in our community. The Raymondville Volunteer Fire Department, comprised of 28 members, protects the lives and property of citizens of Willacy County from natural and man-made hazards. From fire suppression to emphasis on fire prevention, health, and safety education, the department has always worked diligently to meet the changing needs of this community. Fire Chief Oscar Gutierrez emphasizes that the department has built a strong reputation for their services to this community. It's all about superior level of emergency service and preparedness that continually improves the quality of life, health, and safety to its citizens. In talking to one of the firefighters, I learned a lot about what it takes to have the fire trucks ready to go. They can hold more water and the hose can reach even further than one would ever imagine. This is actually a uh, pumper. This truck is actually designed to roll to residential uh, city fires. This truck's sole job is to provide water supply to the surrounding uh, trucks and apparatuses that are, that are on the scene. This truck has a total of a thousand feet of hose. Every time there's a house fire or a building fire, there's not a fire hydrant that's right next to the fire. So basically what this allows is for us to connect to a fire hydrant, which is a, at least at the most have a thousand feet away so we can connect and then from there we connect straight to the fire truck which would be any given distance away from the actual scene. We're about to go for a ride. I tell you what, there are more buttons in here than I ever thought. Firefighters Randy Salinas and Oscar Moreno took us for a ride we won't soon forget. It's a little intimidating when you first look at it, but everything has a purpose. These are just the certain lights that, that you're activating. I knew that my joyride, by far, did not reflect an actual emergency call. What goes to the firefighter's mind through a mist of sirens, while en route to an emergency call, and at the mercy of unfamiliar grounds? What lies behind a wall of fire? The operation of the department makes it outstanding because of the the unity of the people. Um, we have 28 great members, very active. They'll respond to any fire any given day without prejudice. They'll just get in their cars and go. Fire spreads instantly, and this department is prepared for any situation, whether it involves people, animals, hazardous chemicals, buildings, brush, and more. And that's what makes it work, is the understanding between 
these individuals and their hard work. I have a great deal of respect for the Raymondville Volunteer Fire Department, for they risk their lives every time they go out on a call. They do this on a volunteer basis and their ultimate reward is keeping this community safe. The Raymondville Volunteer Fire Department would like to remind citizens to be extra vigilant in activities that may lead to accidental fires. It is always best to prevent a fire than to have to deal with one. A fire can be one of the most tragic events in one's life. You're watching BTX TV. The 911 emergency response facilities are dedicated to protecting the lives of citizens through preparedness and mitigation procedures. They respond in an effective manner to emergencies and disaster, coordinate and participate cohesively, focusing on public safety. We have seen that some of these facilities operate on a volunteer basis as well. Our hats off to all who serve to ensure the safety of others.